What's up everyone, my name is Frank. I hope you're all having a great day today. I recently purchased the Strike Pack FPS Dominator by Collective Minds. It's a controller adapter which adds two remappable paddles at the back of the controller and it also acts as a mod pack. Now I'm going to be doing a full unboxing, review, and putting it to the test and letting you guys know if it's worth purchasing and could this potentially be a scuff killer. I'm going to leave timestamps in the description and annotations up on screen so you guys can skip to whichever part of the video that you want to see first. Now let's get to unboxing. Before I begin I just want to say I do not use any mods. I never have, never will, and I do not condone the use of mods. My primary use for this device is to utilize the two remappable paddles which it gives you. Now if you're looking to purchase this product you can pick it up at GameStop for $50 Canadian. As you can see, the whole box is printed in a glossy finish. Front of the box has the name, picture of the device, and bullet points of what the product can do. Coming to one of the sides, it has a warning label. And going to the other side, it has the trademarked agreement. Now coming to the back of the box, over here is a brief description of what the product could do. And here is a diagram showing the key features of the device. Now to open it up for you guys. First thing that we have is the warranty card. And Collective Minds gives you one year warranty on the product you just have to sign up up online on their website i'm not too sure how their customer service is now, hopefully i'll never have to deal with them and i just noticed that their main office is located in montreal it's not that far from my house so if i do have a problem with the product i will be going straight to their main office next we have the user manual and i always say when you purchase a product you should always read the manual before using it in this particular case, if you want to utilize all of the key features that the Strike Pack FPS Dominator has to offer and use it to its max potential, you should really read the user manual. Next, we have a 10 foot long USB cable. I would have liked for it to be packaged in plastic just to, to further protect it, but it's okay. This end is the end that connects into your PlayStation 4. And the other end connects into the strike pack. And this is a proprietary cable, so the end is custom, so only this wire will be able to fit into the strike pack. And I, I get why companies do that. It forces you to go back to them to purchase a brand new wire. You could always do some sketchy stuff and file down this side on an existing cable for it to fit but really guys just take care of your cables it's not that hard to do now getting to the actual device i'm gonna pop it out of the plastic and here it is it is extremely tiny it's not that big it's completely made out of plastic and it's not that heavy side view, view of the back, view of the bottom, view from the front. So this is where you connect the USB cable to. Over here are LED lights. I'm going to bring it closer so you guys could see. There's eight of them and those lights will light up and that signifies which mod you are using. Coming to the back, we have the left and right select button, which these are used to remap the two paddles, which are right here. Again, all made out of plastic. In order to activate the paddle, it's a side pressing motion. Over here is a latch, and this will latch on to your controller to secure it on. And I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna try to get a good view for you guys. Over here, there are three spikes and those spikes 
will clamp onto the three bottom holes of the speaker on the PlayStation 4 controller. Right over here, this is the part that connects into the USB port of the controller. As you may have noticed, once this latches up, it blocks the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the controller. And Collective Minds did that on purpose because they provide their own headphone jack and you need to use their headphone jack when you're using the strike back. So some cool little features that I like a lot is that the paddles are removable. As you can see, and they're held on by magnets. And this little part right there, that's what goes into the little hole over there. And by pressing the paddle on side motion, it will activate the button. And it's super easy, this clips on, it's easy as that to remove. And they did that for a number of reasons. First reason, if you ever break one of the paddles, you can easily replace it, but you're not really exerting that much force on the paddle during normal use. So I'm not too worried about it breaking. The real reason why I think they made them removable is because there'll be different paddles which you could purchase in the future. So let's say if you want a longer paddle, maybe a shorter one or maybe a more curved one, you'll be able to purchase that and get the, the proper feeling that you want, kind of like what control freaks do. So I'm gonna grab a controller and I'm gonna show you how to install it. In order to connect the device, you need a stock PlayStation 4 controller you guys should all have one. A stock one comes when you purchase the PlayStation 4. So what you want to do is grab your controller, grab the strike pack, and you have to align the two USB ports with each other. So what I do is kind of just slide it on, align the ports, and it will click into place. Now, coming to the latch. Remember the three little spikes on the latch, those will connect into the three bottom holes of the speaker. What you do is flip the latch up, align the holes, don't be shy to apply some pressure, and it will click into place just like that. And it's that easy to install the device onto your controller. And I have to say, it does feel nice. The paddles are well placed for the way I grip the controller, and it's such an ergonomic design. The paddles follow the contour of the controller, which I really, really like. Let's connect the PlayStation 4 controller to the PlayStation. Now what you want to do first is you want to press the PS button and that will turn on your PlayStation 4, log into your profile. Now in order to use the Strike Pack FPS Dominator, it needs to be wired via the USB cable to the PlayStation 4 controller. So it is not wireless, you need the USB cable in order to utilize all of its features. So what you want to do next is grab the USB cable, connect it to your PlayStation, and then connect the end into the strike pack. And it is a very snug fit. So once it's on, you press the PlayStation button again, and that will prompt you to log into your profile again. Click X, log in. And then you are ready to use the strike pack. So as you can see, there's a white light on on the Collective Minds logo. And that signifies that we are in competition mode. And that prevents the use of any mods and you're only allowed to use the paddles. So to remap the paddles, what you wanna do is, for instance, if you wanna remap the right paddle, you wanna hold the right select button. So you're gonna hold it, and you're gonna press any button that you wanna remap. In my case, I'm gonna press X, and I'm gonna release. And it's that easy to remap the paddle. And the same thing for the left. You hold the left select button, I'm gonna choose circle, release off of the buttons, and it's been remapped. 
Something that's really cool is that you could remap two buttons to one paddle. So for the games where you're constantly pressing X and square together, or X and circle together, you could have them both mapped to whichever paddle you want. And that again is super simple. What you're gonna do is, uh, let's say we're remapping the right one, you're gonna hold the right select button, you're gonna click X and then you're gonna click circle and then you're gonna release. So every time you click on the right paddle, it's gonna press both X and circle or X and square, whatever you have it set to at the same time. Now you could remap any button that you want besides the two triggers because those signals are different from the others. Now, if you wanna use mods, what you wanna do is you're gonna hold the left select button and you're gonna press the right one and release. And when I do that, the Collective Minds logo LED changes to blue and that signifies that the mods are ready to be used. So remember these LED lights up here signify what mod you are using. So it goes from left to right. Starting from left is one, all the way to eight. And each LED, when they're lit up, that signifies a class. So you have eight classes. And in every class, there is a set of mods which you could choose from. And then those mods, depending on which one you choose, they could be able to be fine-tuned. So I'm gonna give you guys a little example. So let's say you wanna change your mod or apply a mod. What you wanna do is hold the left D-pad. So you're gonna hold the left D-pad and you're gonna use square to go up a class and X to go down a class. And you're gonna see the blue LED is gonna change. So now we're on number two, number three, number four. I'm gonna go down to number one. Number one, class number one is primary weapons. And now that I'm in that class, I wanna choose the mod. In order to choose mod, again, you hold down on the left D-pad and you use triangle and circle to go up and down. And you're gonna notice that the orange light blinks. So if I go up again, it's gonna blink twice repeatedly. And that signifies what mod you're on. If I go again, pressing triangle is gonna flash three times. So I'm gonna bring it down, I'm gonna use circle and then go to one. So there you go, you see it flashing one time. And that is the rapid fire mod. And if you wanna fine tune it, or if the mod is able to be fine tuned, what you wanna do is again, hold down on the left D-pad and use your triggers and it will flash purple. And depending on how many times it flashes, that's whatever you're fine tuning it to. And in order to save the mod, you just have to release off the D-pad. And it's that simple to mod the controller. And as you can see, the blue LED light stays on. And if you want to apply another mod, you can. So you can have multiple mods on at the same time. And everything that I just showed you is in the manual. It is well written, so thoroughly read it. And I just gave you a brief overview of how to quickly change mods, but there are so many other features that you can do with the Strike Pack FPS Dominator. So I really encourage you to thoroughly read the user manual. Now let's put the Strike Pack FPS Dominator to the test. I'm gonna be using the anti-recoil mod, which is class number three. As I mentioned before, class number one is primary weapon fire, then there's secondary weapon fire, adjustable anti-recoil, quick scope, all or one, drop shot, left paddle mod, and class number eight is right paddle mod. And again, each of those classes has its own mods. So for a primary weapon class, the mods are rapid fire, adjustable rapid fire, optimized jitter, adjustable burst fire, impulse fire. So I just activated the adjustable anti-recoil and it really didn't do much for the NV4 assault rifle. I'm gonna switch to the Volk and all I'm doing is I'm aiming and I'm shooting. Both of my thumbs are off of the aiming stick so the gun is doing its natural recoil process. As you can see, it did help a lot. Now the anti-recoil mod allows you to fine tune it. So depending on the recoil pattern of your gun, you could get it to where that weapon is pretty accurate. Now I switch to the M1, which is a single fire assault rifle. 
and I'm going to change it into a four round burst. Now you could go up to two to six round burst, I believe. As you see, it is a four round burst. All I'm doing is I'm holding down the trigger and it does a four round burst. Now I'm going to activate the mod to turn it into a fully automatic weapon. And it just takes a couple of seconds to change your mod. So once you get the hang of it, you'll get pretty quick at it. Like two to three seconds to switch mods. So you see it's full automatic. All I'm doing is I'm holding down the trigger, not letting go, and it's firing it off the complete clip. I'm going to switch to the R3K, and it still remains a three-round burst weapon. In order to get this to full auto, you got to choose the appropriate class and the appropriate mod in order to turn that into a full automatic weapon. I'm playing Modern Warfare Remastered version. I've got Auto Run activated. I have Drop Shot, which you're going to see in a second. And I have Burst Fire on. So the way I have the Drop Shot mod activated is the second I go prone, it will start shooting. And I've got the left paddle remapped to circle. So super quick. So the second I touch that paddle, I go prone and I automatically start shooting. And all the mods do work. As I mentioned before, I do not use mods. I never have and I never will use mods. And I do not condone the use of mods. But they are pretty fun to use. Here I'm using the Bar 50 Cal. And I've got the Quick Scope mod on. And this mod allows you to fine tune it. So the second you aim or fire off the shot, which the way I have it set up now, there's a couple of millisecond delay and you can set it up from 10 milliseconds all the way up to 300 millisecond delay. Yeah, as you can see, it, it, it's fun. I have to admit, it is pretty fun. This is my first game where I'm using the Strike Pack FPS Dominator on. And it took me a while to get used to it, but once I got the hang of it, I really saw the benefit of having the two remappable paddles at the back of the controller. I have it in competition mode. Again, I do not condone the use of mods, so I'm only using the paddles. The left paddle is set to circle, and the right paddle is set to X. Now, those are two buttons that you most commonly use during a gunfight, especially in the newer Call of Duty games. With the implementation of the jetpacks, you really benefit from jumping away from your opponent and jumping away from a heated gunfight. Beforehand, I would have to remove my thumb off of the right joystick and press X to, to do that double jump. Now, all my fingers remain on the controller and I have complete control of all the buttons. And after a while, you really see that it does give you an advantage in a tough gunfight. You have complete control, which is simply amazing. Now getting to, is this a scuff killer? In short, yes it is. And I'm going to tell you why. Although I personally do not own a scuff controller, I've used one on multiple occasions. And... I found it hard to use the paddles. Now, on a scuff controller, the paddles are towards the center of the controller. And just the way I hold the controller and I feel comfortable holding a PlayStation 4 controller, I have a hard time utilizing those paddles. I priced the scuff out and the way I would customize it is roughly around $200. Whereas the Strike Pack FPS Dominator is only $50 and it does the exact same job. On the Strike Pack, the paddles are completely remappable. And if you want that feature on a scuff, you have to pay extra in order to have that feature. The Strike Pack is also a mod pack and it has tons of mods which you can customize and fine tune. Scuff isn't going to go out of business anytime soon. They have that gaming community and they do sponsor a lot of pro players. But I'm telling you, the Strike Pack FPS Dominator by Collective Minds is going to gain in popularity. 
they have a great quality product at a very low price which does the exact same thing as a scuff controller and so much more for my final thoughts if you're looking to purchase this product i say go for it you will not be disappointed it's an all-around great product and i'm very pleased with it again i do not use mods but if that's your thing all the mods work the paddles are completely remappable they are well placed and they're easy to use and since the paddles are removable there's potential for there to be different style paddles available to better suit your playing style whichever way you feel comfortable using the paddles again you will not be disappointed with the product before i continue as i mentioned in a previous video I do get extremely lucky in, in care packages and as you see here I get the apex on a care package crazy my luck is just amazing anyway if you have any specific questions regarding the strike pack FPS dominator by collective minds leave a comment down below I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this please like and comment letting me know if you are enjoying my content and want to see more of it, please subscribe to my channel. It is greatly appreciated. Everyone, Happy New Year. Best of luck in 2017. Go achieve your goal and be the best that you can be. Anyway, enjoy watching the rest of my gameplay. Peace.